I'm Kristen Andre, founder and chief strategist of Andre Consulting Group. I founded my company almost 10 years ago because I love helping people not only succeed, but thrive in their careers and their lives. So many times I meet amazing people who have so much more potential than what they're utilizing. As I engage with them, there seems to be a common theme, the limits they place on themselves. Throughout this podcast series, we're going to visit some incredible people, people who have created more intentional lives for themselves, those who've had that no limits moment where they chose to grow and they put things in motion to help them do so. We will focus on how you can break through limits. We will equip you with strategies to help you lead a more intentional life, and we will have a lot of fun along the way. So let's dive in. Hello, everybody, and welcome to No Limits with Kristen Andre. We have with us today Casey Gartner, who is a financial advisor, an excellent financial advisor, and a mom, mom. and a friend of mine, too, which is going to be super fun. So um, I'm excited to have you with me today. I'm excited to be here. So we, Casey and I have known each other for a while. And what I think is really cool and why I'm excited to have you on the show is, you know, we named the show No Limits because it's talking about pushing through limits and kind of excelling and and pushing past the things that are holding people back. And to me, I think you do that. I don't think you realize you do it. You just kind of, you do that effortlessly. So talk about your career a little bit. I mean, because you're in a male dominated field. Yes. Total rock star. Thank you. You're welcome. But it, um, yeah, so like how did drink. you get like my, like the rock star drink? So how did you get, I mean, you've been doing, how long have you been doing this now? So I've been with my organization 15 years, more okay. on the support side initially, um, because that whole male dominated field, I got right. in my own head thinking that I didn't know enough or was experienced enough. And then after nine years in my, after my son was born, I came back. To okay. build out my own practice with my own clients. Yeah. So what, I mean, what did it take you? Was it scary going from kind of the the support role, salaried position to being truly entrepreneurial and launching your own practice? Yes and no. It was exciting. I finally felt like I was at a spot where I knew enough, at least in my mind, Okay. where I was positioned to do it. I think there's a lot of people out there, men specifically, they don't necessarily need to know the temperature of the water or the depth of the water, they'll just dive in head first. Whereas right. women, we need to know everything. Right. And I felt like I didn't know everything, but I knew enough. But it took you it took you a while to get yep. to that point. Yep. What was the scariest part about launching your own firm or your own practice? Positioning myself, repositioning myself. Okay. Because people knew of me professionally in one role and now I was transitioning the lead. into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. What's been the most fun thing for you? The most fun thing is just the professional fulfillment, the fact that I feel valuable in my clients' lives. They will call and um, just need to bounce ideas off me. And I feel like, I think as humans, we like to feel feel valuable and important. Yeah. And when you get to be that for your clients in, in a professional way and actually have this personal relationship with them now, that's really fun. And I think that a lot of times, especially in finance, you you don't have people dealing with the personal piece, you know, so because I have a financial background and and a lot of times we work with them on what their finances are and we forget the person. We forget to kind of take in whatever industry somebody is in. If they run in their own business, they they forget sometimes they're dealing with human beings and people. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think that's kind of neat about your practice. So do you do that consciously? Because I know when I've sent... I've sent a few of my friends to you that that yeah. work with you, which is awesome. And I always tell them like she's awesome, super nice. You'll you know super smart, super nice. But the thing that they gravitate towards is the fact that you know somebody, especially with an advisor, that you're likable. You know, kind of open and honest. So what do you just? How do you do that? How I do think you balance the natural the... curiosity that I have about other people? Okay. Despite this arrangement right now, where yeah. you're forcing me to talk about myself, I'm highly uncomfortable talking I about know. myself. I love which it. Makes it really easy in my field to just inquire about other people. Okay. If I'm asking them questions about themselves, I don't have to talk about me. Awesome. So Should I ask you <laughs> questions about other people. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's. I mean, the natural curiosity is a good thing because yeah. then it allows you to get to know the other person. Right. And I think. Th- I mean, there's a lot of people that do the work that I do. But they're, yeah. not, they're not working with me because of what I do. They're working with me, hopefully, because of who I am. Right. Um, and they feel comfortable because the type of work that I'm doing around the finances can be really scary and daunting. Yep. And if we can just make it casual and comfortable, yep. they're more likely to engage in a conversation and make their situation better. 
and you get to know you get to know them as people too, yep. which honestly is more fun. Way more fun. I think it's a lot more fun. Yep. So what has been, you, you know, let's talk a little bit about you. Could, you have a son. I have a son. who is stinking adorable. Thank not you. even funny. <laughs> <laughs> His little. I love it when you post pictures because it's awesome. So, but that's a, a challenge. I mean, you're you're working more than full time. You have a very established practice. You've you know, you've taken care of, of the little one. Mm-hmm. So what's the biggest challenge that you see or the the limits I think people have in trying to grow a business and build your family at the same time? I don't, I try, when I'm coaching people or mentoring, I try to explain to them to use your current position in life or in your career or what whatever it happens to be to your advantage. Okay. So if you're starting a business, leverage that. Um, you're not going to be able to say in 10 years, hey, I'm really excited about launching my financial planning practice. Like right. you can say in your first year, yet people in their first year are afraid to say that. Right. So I leverage the fact that I'm a working mom to my advantage. Yep. If people want to meet with me on a Saturday afternoon, that's family time. Yeah. And whether I have a family or not, I don't, as much as I love my clients, I don't want to be working. 24 seven. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes I feel like I am, but yeah. um you know, I leverage that. I don't use it in a, as an excuse, but I feel like I'm a better advisor because I'm a mom and I'm a better mom because I work. Yep. And I have tremendous respect for men and women that choose to stay at home with their kids. That's just not for me. Yeah. So, and, and I'm kind of the same way. It's just, I, I have a lot of friends that stay home and, yeah. and it works for them. And I swear, I think half of them are busier than I am. For sure. Way, way busier yeah. than I am. But what do you learn from the little one? That you translate into work because you, under, you have an understanding of what's really important okay there's regardless of what industry you're working in there's always seems to be some sort of fire drill and you really yeah. do need to put it in perspective yeah what i do is important but i'm not saving lives yeah hopefully lifestyles but i'm not saving lives and so um really having my child to put it in perspective we talk a lot you we've had conversations yeah. what your why is yep um he's my why He's the reason I do what I do. And if I can remember that and help other people remember what it, why it is that they're doing whatever it is that they're doing. Right. Which, again, goes back to the personal relationship and connecting with people on a personal level. Why are they doing whatever it is that they're doing? Yep. So yeah. that we can help execute on some of the other stuff. Yeah. Which is fun. I mean, you've got to get to understand that. And I feel like in a lot of companies, they don't. I mean, the same thing with. You're just a cog in a wheel. I yeah. Think. Like, mm-hmm. especially with retail. We hear a lot about retail recently, like all the stores closing and everything. The Amazon effects taking mm-hmm. hold. And there's no relationship there. There's not an opportunity when you're buying a, you know, I don't know, ream of paper to really build a relationship. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's some companies that have mastered the relationships. But for Amazon the most part, Amazon and I have a great relationship. Amazon they and I have things within we are two in, days regularly. Yes. It's like a gift to me every time I get home from work. We are. And <laughs> thanks to Amazon, I'm building relationship with the, the UPS guy and, you know, Absolutely. the other people that are at my house frequently. <laughs> but, it, you know, it it has taken over because, you know, used to be we'd go to stores or, you know, do what have you need to meet people, you yep. know. So I, I don't I don't know that the the Internet or the Amazon effect is going to hit. Well, I think social every media industry. has a reverse effect, too. Because you don't have to engage in a relationship. You feel like you have a relationship because you're following somebody or yeah. engaging on social media. But you really, that interpersonal piece is lacking. And I think that's interesting because it can go both ways. Because mm-hmm. I know we're, um, I was telling you before, I have my, my class reunions coming up. <laughs> and we will not mention what year. Not, no. um, but my, with tenure. my class reunion, tenure. <laughs> tenure, yes. With it coming up, um, it's interesting because the the last reunion we had when I was there, everybody was like, oh, you you remember everybody. I'm like, mm, I'm just pretty active on Facebook. So <laughs> I think I probably feel like I have more of a relationship with people I haven't seen in years yep. than I do. Yes. Um, or I feel like I know, I mean, the part I love is the fact that I know what's going on. I know who has kids. I know who has grandkids. I know, you know, all this type of stuff. But, you, but it's nobody probably, at your class reunion has grandkids. It's only your tenure. No. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. That's right. In theory, yes. I was like, what? Um, no, but, you know, it kind of it kind of gives you this fake sense of relationship, if you will. And it, so it's both ways. One, you can feel you have a relationship that's not really there. But two, it does give you a glimpse into people's lives and seeing, you know, but what But you have what to remember, and I've with. said this before, and I've actually said it on social media, that social media is a highlight reel. It's totally a highlight reel. 
Yeah, I have, have no sense for what's going on underneath the hood. I agree. And I think that's one thing to keep in mind. And, and mine's, a, you know, all of ours, mine's a highlight reel, yeah. too. I personally, I'm not trying to be somebody that I'm not on social media, but I also am not the type that feel like I need to air my dirty laundry or when I'm having a bad day Good. or or things like that. So it, and I had somebody at church stop me and said, you know, I'm so impressed with what you do with the girls and everything. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm not posting the... You know, the videos of me yelling at them or them, you know, in timeout or whatever, <laughs> those don't get posted. But you're right. It you is, should, though. That I probably should. They'd probably be more entertaining and, and more real life. There there may actually be more timeout videos than there are <laughs> family pics. But, you know, we all have the good and the bad. Yep. And, you know, part of it is is pushing through goals and really trying to look at, you know, what, you know, like you mentioned earlier, your why. Yep. What's important. Well, and I talked to my son, too. We have this rule in our house. No problems, just solutions. And as a six-year-old, he's always whining about something or wanting something. Yeah. And I said to him, I said, honey, mommy doesn't deal. Mommy's ears turn off when you start whining. Yeah. So like, I don't, I don't want to hear the problem. Yep. Come to me with a solution. And I think that exi- I, I try to carry that in business. That yep. actually started for me in business. And then I translated it yeah. in my personal life. Hence the whole working mom, yeah. business woman kind of relationship. But you push through limits. You're not going to get anywhere with a problem. Right. And, and some people, I've, I feel like, and that's that's actually why I've made a conscious choice on social media not to. And have I been through stages where I was fussing and complaining? Yep. We've all been there. You've probably seen <laughs> some of my rants. But, you know, for the most part, I try to stay away from it because you're it's just massaging the problem. And if yeah. you, you put it out there and enough people massage the problem, it, the problem gets bigger. Yeah. And you haven't done anything to address the solution. Mm-hmm. So what is your what is your tip with him? Does he bring you solutions? Oh, gosh, no. He's six. <laughs> <laughs> you bring him for him. Yes. So, yeah, that's right. You got to help. But I think the main thing is it helps him focus on the fact that he's yes. got to come up with it, not just yes. wine. Mm-hmm. I don't speak wine in my house either. I mean, so drink wine, do. not speak wine. There's, there's drink wine, wine but not speak wine. wine. That's right. <laughs> but all right. So how do you, you know, when you're managing your son at home and managing the business, yes. what's the biggest, what's the biggest takeaway do you think that... I don't know, that helps you fit it all in, if you will. Are you familiar with Stephen Covey's Jar of Rocks? Yes, yes, That's yes, how. yes. Okay. If, for those that are not familiar, you've got a jar of rocks, and you put your big rocks in. Those are your mm-hmm. non-negotiables. And your jar looks full until you put pebbles in, and it fills in all the, the crevices, and it still looks full until you pour the sand in, and then it really looks full, and then you pour the water in, and then it's really full. So there's always room to fit stuff in, but as long as you can start with your non-negotiables, okay. um, which for me is my son. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of women, specifically working women, have a problem putting themselves as a non-negotiable. As a non-negotiable. But I finally got to this place where I realized I'm no good for anybody until I take care of myself. And then I do that through fitness. Um, so fitness is a non-negotiable. It's on my calendar. Yep. Um, and everything else kind of fits itself in. Okay. And I think I like that. And I, I love that analogy. I've seen it, seen it done in, in speeches yeah. and different talks. And it's it's fantastic because it does talk about fitting. So we're going to pause for a minute and take a little break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about those non-negotiables and how we need to treat them. But then we're also going to talk about other things and what needs to fit and what doesn't. So we'll be back in just a few. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Kristen. Be sure and visit my website at www.andregroup.com. That's www.andregroup.com. And while you're there, be sure to download my white paper, Top 10 Reasons Your Business Isn't Growing Fast Enough. Now get out there and create your no limits moment. Welcome back, everyone, to No Limits with Kristen Andre. We are here with Casey Gartner, a financial advisor, mom, rock star extraordinaire. And before the break, we were talking about non-negotiables and how to fit it all in the calendar. And you mentioned that fitness was a non-negotiable for you. And I know (laughs) I have a little insight. She knows where I'm going. So... I, th- this isn't just fit. I mean, most people, when they think of fitness, they're like, I'm going to go to the gym a couple times a week. Like, you are religious about it. 
And you just did, what did you just do recently, Miss Casey Gratner? Fitness competition. She did a fitness competition. So for those of you guys that are listening on podcasts, sorry about it. But for, the, or, <laughs> but, but for those of you guys who are following the live stream, Casey's in, in great shape. I mean, you were relentless about your training for that, though. Yes. Because I remember calling you and saying, hey, let's grab lunch. You're like, I can't grab lunch. I can't, I can't. grab lunch. I mean, it was like, yeah, measured to the thing. So no, tell, you would say, let's grab drinks. I said, let's grab do drinks. lunch yeah. <laughs> let's do Let's do grilled chicken breast and lettuce. Um, all yeah. right. So talk about the discipline it took because that was way I remember when you first said this is a goal of mine and I really want to do this that was way out of your norm and your comfort zone so what disciplines did it take for you to I think I needed to start seeing progress in order for me to make it stick okay I've always enjoyed fitness I like working out but I was getting bored okay and needed a new challenge. I needed a new challenge. Okay. For me, the diet was going to be the hardest part, and it was because I enjoy food. Mm-hmm. And since then, I have been enjoying food again. I'm not in the shape that I was <laughs> two or three months ago. Um, and I'm still keeping up the fitness regimen because I enjoy that. For me, a lot of people, for me, that's a mental break. That's my me time. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a physical component too. But I think a lot of people don't enjoy that. So that was, I mean, that's kind of mm-hmm. your non negotiable because yeah. it gives you. Kind yeah, of relax, that, that pause. helps me. It helps with mental health, physical health, emotional health. And again, it's my quiet time. So, I mean, so you're right. That's a non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. But I think the the fitness, the quiet time, the the mental and physical health, that was your your big rock, your non-negotiable. That was my non-negotiable. But you bumped it up a level when you got bored. Yeah, the diet was the hard part. But once I got going, it actually made my life a lot easier. Okay. Um, I forget there was a an article written or, or something you 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 know Anna Wintour the former editor, mm-hmm. editor of Vogue she had a quote unquote uniform despite the fact that she worked in the fashion industry it was you know a sheath a, 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 a dress yeah a sheath dress and a and a cardigan she didn't have to think about that in okay. her day she had so many decisions to make it's in a day it's kind of a Zuckerberg wardrobe but exactly. probably higher end yeah. exactly so for me all of the decisions that a person has to make during a day I never had to think about the food because it was it was pre portioned. It was, yep. it was, I mean, you looked in my fridge, all of my meals were prepared. And so it became, it made my life easier, actually. So sometimes the structure and everything, even though it's something oh, yeah. different and new, it, it, it made it easier. Yep. I mean, it's like if you have a new puppy, they, they need the structure and, and the discipline. If you have a child, they need the structure and the discipline. Okay. And I realized that it was actually helpful for an adult. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how the things we do for the kids sometimes work with us, sometimes. right? The schedules, the, the planned out meals oh, and yes. everything. So, yeah. All right, so what was the biggest, what was the, I don't want to say reward or payoff, but I mean, you put in an insane amount of discipline, which is so admirable. And I, you know, I got a chance to see, kind of see the results and and it was awesome. Like I'm sitting there going, holy cow, this was like a big, a big deal. So how did you feel like realizing that I really followed these disciplines, followed this schedule, this workout routine? This It shows you that you can do it. Okay. I think you, people get in their head, it's present company probably included, that you feel like you can't do something because yeah. it just seems daunting. But it's one step at a time, one day at a time. And once you start seeing progress, it becomes addictive. So how does that, and I think that's the big thing is once you, because so many times we start something and we give up before we start to see the progress because yeah. we're like, yeah, this didn't get me anywhere. Yeah. You know, I've, I, you know, I focus on food a lot and, you know, we'll try diets and do that. And, you know, when I don't lose 10 pounds in the first day and a half, I get very frustrated. <laughs> and I'm like, forget this. Give me some wine. But, you know, one of my one of my friends said that to me recently. She's like, quit trying different fads or different diets or whatever. Just change your habits. The and habits it, are hard. They are hard to change. 21 days, I think. 21 days mm-hmm. to make a habit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So what are right, How can people take? Did it take you 21 days? Do you think to kind of get in the, the swing diet of piece, all this? Probably. I think actually only a week because in the first week I lost a couple of pounds. I wasn't doing it f- to lose weight. Right. Just um, to- and I didn't have that much weight to lose. I did lose a couple of pounds, but it was m- really to tone up. and Yeah. To be able you to talk compete. About, yeah, yeah. You talk about the journey versus the destination. For me, it truly was the journey. It was enjoyable for me. Okay. Um, and it was a, a personal challenge. I wasn't looking to compete against anybody it was to prove to myself that i could do it and show up with the best of them so and i did that and you did which is awesome maybe i'll do it congratulations i don't know maybe you heard it here she might do it again right now i like pizza (laughs) pizza's not bad all right so with that how do you translate that discipline and the progress and everything to other areas of your life like what what other areas is somewhere that somebody could say okay here's where i need some discipline 
Oh goodness! I and mean, work out, work out, professional. either or, because I think personal and professional, we hit the two main ones. It's usually working out and <clears throat> eating right. Yeah, I mean, that's the challenges most people have. But well, what about professionally? Like you said, you just took it one day at a time. Um, for me, professionally. I mean, and you and I have talked about this over the years, figuring out what that one thing is, that non-negotiable, that's going to help you get to the mm-hmm. next level or yeah. help you structure your business in a certain way. And for me, it was keeping at least four client meetings a day. Okay. Um, so is that one of the, when you talk about that, is that one of the big rocks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for me, I felt like if I was seeing enough people in a month, then I was going to have impact to the level that I wanted to have. Okay. Um you'll have some people that want to meet a certain number of individuals a month or get introduced to. They might not actually meet them, but they may receive an introduction. Um, My one thing was keeping at least four a day, which on an average month should translate into about 60 client appointments every month. Um, And that for you was your negotiable? For me, and it it, it took some trial and error. I tried lots of different things because there's lots of different metrics that I can measure my business on, and that one worked for me. Um, So I say, figure out something that works for you. And we talk about it. Where do you get your energy from? Right. Um, I think in business, oftentimes people are trying to work on the things that they're not good at. Yep. Yeah where there's a tremendous shift that can happen if you focus on the things that you actually are good at and leverage the rest out. And I, I think you're spot on because, you know, with you, you enjoy sitting with people, hearing their stories, yeah. learning about them. So that's a that fits with that, that you'd want to see a certain number of people sure. a day. Yeah. And I'm a big... Um, and then not big, talk to anybody for an hour and a half a day at the gym. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Leave her alone at the gym. But, you know, I'm a big advocate and um, believer in the book Strengths Finder, if you've ever read Strengths Finder. And what it does is it talks about what somebody... It has a little quiz that you can take, and it, the Gallup organization actually did it. And it has a assessment that you can do, and it tells you what your natural innate strengths are. Okay. And some people, it is relationships um, or, you know, helping people go from good to great. With some people, it's analytical things and, and learning and, and more intellectual type of things. And everybody's got something that they're good at naturally. Mm-hmm. And what the whole premise of, of StrengthsFinder is, is that if you focus on the things you're good at, you're going to have fun doing it. Those strengths are going to even grow more. You can excel to higher levels. Consequently, if you focus on your weaknesses – you end up with a strong weakness. It's Fair. it's never going to be a strength. And you're miserable. It, and you're miserable. It's never going to be a strength. And what's interesting is when I started, when I first took the assessment, I just started as an advisor yep. um, in finance. And, and we really, I wasn't able to use all my strengths. But but fast forward, you know, nearly 20 years and you, I've been able to mold my career and what I do to fit more in alignment with who I am as a person and what yeah. I feel like I'm naturally good at. So for you... It sounds like the relationship piece is kind of what what lets you gives you your energy. That's what gives me my energy. Yeah. Well, to your point, if you're focusing on something that you're not good at, you're just you're not enjoying the, your time. Right. And time is the only commodity we all have the same amount of. Right. And you can't create more of it. So whether you're rich or poor or male or female or young or old, we all have the same 24 hours. We're right. all created equally there. It's how you choose to spend it. So don't spend it doing something that makes you miserable. Right. Or with people that make you miserable. Exactly. And that goes back to your your jar analogy. It was Covey, you said, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it goes back to that. You've got your non-negotiables in there first. Yeah. So which is, you know, family, career, your, yeah. or whatever your one thing for you, seeing a certain number of people your fitness routine yeah. so when you when you get the non-negotiables in there then you've got things for everything else how do you choose what else fits is it is it around what energizes you well, or what you've helped me a little bit i think with that so what did, <laughs> what did you do what have you found that works for you um i know I pu- well, we talk over. about when you say yes to something what are you saying no to right so if somebody asks me to come and speak at an event out of town does that mean that i'm saying no to time with my son Right. Um, does that mean that I'm saying no to an opportunity at home? Um, if I say yes to meet with somebody that I maybe should not be spending my time meeting with, does that mean that I'm saying no to somebody that I should be spending my time meeting with? Right. If I say yes to getting a full eight hours of sleep, that means I'm saying no to getting an extra couple hours of work in at night. You know, you've yeah. got to weigh the priorities and figure out, again, what fills your cup. Yeah. And a lot of that goes with energy, like we've mm-hmm. talked about before, and you mentioned that earlier, is... You know, what brings you energy? What's going to fill your cup, make you feel at the end of the day like, okay, things are going pretty well. Mm -hmm. I like that. So 
What's the most energizing thing you found in life in general? Life? Yeah. I think ex- just experiencing life. Okay. Um, and being present. Not being just, not just showing up, but being in the game. Okay. Being at the game versus in the game. I like it. I like <laughs> it. So being in the game. So we're going to pause for a minute, be back in just a few, and we're going to talk a little bit more with Casey Gardner. See you in a minute. everyone check out my podcast no limits with Kristen andre on tuesday nights at 7 30. we will tackle the things holding you back and the limits you set on yourself and equip you with some strategies to lead more intentional lives podcast launches every tuesday at 7 30 p.m on facebook.com slash andre group that's facebook.com slash a-n-d-r-e-e group we'll see you there Welcome back, everyone, to No Limits with Kristen Andre. We are wrapping up our time with Casey Gartner, and I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. I, you are quite welcome. So, you know, as I mentioned to you, and we talked about with the the listeners before, is every episode we issue a challenge, and we've built put together a Facebook group, and it is at hashtag No Limits Moment, because what we want, you know, as a coach, my big goal is that people don't just hear stuff, that they actually do stuff with it. So I don't want them to kind of listen to this and all the good advice you're given and go, that was great, and then not do anything with it. So at the end of every episode, we issued them a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think we hit on something with your your non-negotiables. Okay. So how many, we talked about this a minute ago. How many non-negotiables do you think you have? On an ongoing basis, at least three. Okay. I think that's a pretty good number. So yeah. it's usually like something in your career, family, maybe the fitness or something like that. Okay. Person. So what's the best way for people to identify their non-negotiables? How did you, fi- how did you figure out what I, yours were? I just, what's important to you. Okay. What's important to you. And is it more where you spend your time or is it just as these things matter? These things matter. Okay. Any questions that because, people can Well, ask I think themselves? that also sheds some light, you know, if, if, you're doing it for the sake of doing it. Maybe right. you're not, you know, your career should matter, but if that if it's just instinctively doesn't come to you as one of your, one of the things that's important to you, then maybe you're in the wrong career. And I think that's okay because so many times people are miserable what they're doing. Yes. Like I have uh, friends of mine, not clients, because clients, I'd, I'd be able to kind of steer them in, a different, them in a different direction. But, you know, I definitely have a couple friends that are coming to mind that when they talk about their career and their job and what they're doing, they're miserable. They mm-hmm. hate it. And I keep telling them, like, why are you doing this? Yeah. Life is pretty short. Why are you spending time on something that, I mean, it's it's not a non-negotiable for them. It should be negotiated right out of the jar. Yep. So, all right. So when you think about it, so something that brings you energy. Sure. You've said. Yep. Um, something that's just important to you in general. Yes. But not because. You see, you're not doing it just because. No. And it okay. should be important to you because it's important to you, not because you think it should be important to you. Or because other people because think other people think it should be important to you. Okay, so you're saying if yeah, your some kids are not say that it's religion yeah. or God or and that's Absolutely. great, but yeah. don't do it because somebody told you that it should be right. Right. And I had I had somebody tell me that one time um, was a client, and we were talking about ways to meet new people and business strategies and things like that. He's like, he goes, well, you know, mate, should I start going to church? I said, well, what do you mean? He's like, well. You know, maybe I could meet some new clients there. And yeah. I and I, I, I tend to not think when I respond a lot of times. So I looked at him, I said, you should go to church because you're kind of a heathen. Like, it, it's, <laughs> that, that, that should be first and foremost the reason you go. You know, and if clients are a byproduct out of it. But, it, you know, I think a lot of times we do things. We're like, oh, this would be a good idea or that would be a good idea. So is it a gut feel with what your non-negotiables are? Yes. Okay. All right. It's got to be for the right reasons. Yep. And that it's not just doing for doing not sake. For, yes. Okay. All right. So I think that's our challenge. So here's our challenge to our listeners is we, we encourage you to go to our group. It's, it's hashtag no limits on Facebook. And we want you to engage and tell us what it is. So our challenge for this episode is I want you to identify your non-negotiable. So as Casey talked about, what are the things in your life that or must that you are passionate about that are important to you it could be family could be career but it needs to be what you feel is important so these are the non-negotiables that you're 
putting in your calendar, you're putting in your life, and that just truly, truly matter. So I want you to jump on the page, share it with us, and let us help hold you accountable to making sure those things are filling your life the way they should be. So Casey, thank you so much for being here. Thank you it for having me. It was good to have you. Thank and you. until next week, we will see you soon. Go push past those limits. <laughs>